all biology needs to be controlled. You know, every single biological process that happens in our body has to be switched on and switched off and coordinated and proceed at the right rate for the system to work for us to get out of bed in the morning. And basically it turns out that these very complicated names phosphorylase and ubiquitylase are the major mechanism that biology uses to control you know, systems, to make things switched off and on. They're very simple you know, chemical processes. This is really, really important because it turns out that almost all diseases, cancer, immune disorders, uh, you know, Parkinson's disease, is caused by disruptions in this biology. You know, these and the enzymes that control this biology and they either occur too, you know, they, they're too switched on when they should be switched off or they're not switched on enough when they should be switched on. These are the hallmarks of many of the, uh, of the disease and understanding this biology is, is turning out to be very critical because all pharmaceutical companies now are, and clinicians are trying to understand these enzymes better and if you can understand what goes wrong with the system, if your car's broken, if you know what's wrong with it, you can fix it. And it's the same in you know, very complicated biology. When we know what the, the cause of the, con of, the, of, of the disease is, you know, that gives us new ideas you know, to play the engineer, to work with pharmaceutical companies and clinicians to come up with new ideas to, to better treat and even cure disease. As a biochemist, I was actually quite surprised when, when I first started working on Parkinson's disease about 10 years ago that we still, you know, although I've been working on it for nearly 200 years, we, we, and we, we understand a lot about the biology that's disrupted. We still don't have any, um, you know, disease-modifying therapy, you know. So that, that means that, you know, we can treat some of the symptoms of the condition, but we can't slow or even stop the progression of the disease. And so, so, so that, 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 that's the goal of all the work I'm going to talk about, is to try to understand, you know, what's causing Parkinson's disease in some patients and using that information to come up with a better strategy to, uh, to treat the disease. So, you know, there's many, there's, there's many, many causes of Parkinson's disease and probably most people it's caused by unknown, un unknown, maybe just natural, you know, ageing, it's maybe by, maybe by some infectious agents, maybe by env environmental toxins and, and that's probably the 90 you know, percent of, of the patients uh, fall in this category. And, 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 and these agents will be affecting the normal pathways that control Parkinson's disease, but maybe in ways which we don't fully understand. And because it's, we don't really fully understand, there's no real way to get a handle on what's going wrong with patients, the 90 percent of patients who degenerate, who have normal age onset Parkinson's disease. This is typically over the age of 50 or 60 or, or 70 age of years. But what, what, where the breakthrough has come in the last uh, you know, 20 years has been the identifications of familial cases of Parkinson's disease. This is where it runs in families, and this is caused by a genetic mutation, often in just a single gene. You know, you've got three billion DNA sequences in each of your cells, and it's like the Bible, and it's like one punctuation mistake in that book you know, is enough to lead to Parkinson's disease. And and, and, and that is fantastic knowledge because that tells us specifically the cause of the disease in, in those 10% of patients. So the first time in the history of medicine we actually know that the disease in these patients is caused by a specific disruption. And then, and then, and then that's very important because then we can then understand, study that gene, understand what it does, how it's, how, how it, what biological process it, it regulates how the mutations disrupt its function and then, you know, try to uh, counteract that disruption with, 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 with a potentially in the future, you know, a new drug. So there's at least 18 genes that have been found now by the work of fantastic clinicians to be involved in uh, Parkinson's disease and, and they're all listed on, 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 you know, on this slide here. You know, some are early, some are late. They all have a diff very complicated gene name and, uh, and I've, I've summarized the biology that they control. And, and the reason why I became interested in, uh, in, in Parkinson's disease is because, as I told you, I mean, you know, as a biochemist, I work on phosphorylation and ubiquitylation biology. And um, what's amazing is that at least six of these 18 genes actually disrupt biology involving phosphorylation and ubiquitylation. But I'm going to talk to you today about our work on this LRRK2 enzyme. So it's, a, 
It causes late onset disease and it's also known as, as, as parkade and it regulates this phosphorylation biology which I'll tell you about in a few minutes time. And I'd just like to give you a bit, a bit of the background of this gene because this is really, really important. I think this is going to lie at the heart of a uh, better understanding and treating many Parkinson's disease patients. So the key breakthrough genetic papers that led to the discovery of this gene were, were described in 2004 in back-to-back -back papers in a journal called Neuron. One team was led by this amazing geneticist called Tom Magasso in Tübingen. I had the, f the pleasure of spending a whole day with him in his hospital, uh, I think last J June, and it was amazing. He's got hundreds of Parkinson's disease patients, and all his patients get sequenced genetically, and the mutations that cause the disease are being discovered you know, nearly every day in his lab. And the second paper is actually led by Andrew Singleton, but there's also, uh, some of you might know in, in the UK, there's Nick Woods, who's based at the university in UCL, and he's a legend as well in the genetics of Parkinson's disease, and he's also identified many of the genes, and I've also had the pleasure to, to work with him quite a lot. So uh, just to, just, I, I just really want to give you a little bit of, of a vignette here of how important it is, you know, families, patients lie at the heart of, you know, all the biology that we, you know, that we do. And for the discovery of LRRK2, it's actually apparently 52 families, you know, from, uh, from various countries, Japan, Germany, Spain, the UK, you know, and the US were, were critical for, you know, for this discovery. And, and essentially the geneticists, you know, found these different families. The males are so in the squares and the females in circles. The, the ones in black are the, are the patients with, 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 with Parkinson's disease. And you can see that the disease, you know, in this family runs through different families on this, you know, in these schemes. And it's also quite amazing that there's, e there's even one Japanese family I found which had seven different generations of patients they were able to, uh, you, you know, study. And, 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 and this was very critical identifying the LRRK2 gene. So what's special about LRRK2, there's different types of gene mutations. You know, we all inherit a gene from our mother and from our father. And in, in the case of LRRK2, it's known as dominant. So if one of your genes is, is, it has a mutation either from your mother or father, you, you know, 50%, you have 50% chance of getting the disease. So the disease is dominant. And because of this, you can see, you know, it runs through the families. In every generation, you tend to have patients with the mutations. Other mutations are recessive, so you need to have, you know, you, you need to inherit both the mutant copies from your mother and father to get the, you know, to get the disease. But in the case of LRRK2, it's a dominant mutation, so if you just have one copy of the gene, you're, you're, you're predisposed to getting Parkinson's disease. And this gene is, we all have 23 chromosomes in our body. You have two, one from your mother and one from your father. And LRRK2 is located on the chromosome 12. It was discovered from analyzing these families. And you can actually pinpoint the bit of DNA that is mutated. And, you know, and, and the reason what, you know, I told you about this is because it regulates phosphorylation biology. So once you have the gene, you then study what does the gene look like, what does it do, what protein does it encode. And it encodes a protein known as an enzyme. So enzymes are a group of many, many proteins that encode enzymes. These are things that you know, do things in cells. And the type of enzyme it's called is called a kinase. So these are, these are very important enzymes because these are the enzymes that put phosphate groups onto proteins in response to a signal, and that changes the activity of the protein that the phosphate is attached to. This is the key way that this biology is regulated through protein phosphorylation, and putting the phosphate on the, on the protein can either switch it on or off, depending on the, syst on, on, the syst on the system. There's actually about 550 protein kinases in our body. They all catalyze in different you know, enzymic reactions. But th so th this, th this discovery of LRK2 was critical because it told us we had a kinase. Its role in biology would be to put a phosphate I on some unknown substrate. This will be complicated, this slide, but it is from an expert's point of view. When you have the gene, you can look at the details of the different parts of the gene, and that tells you that they have different regions, which we call domains. They eat to different things. But what's really important is you can see where the punctuation marks that cause disease lie where they lie in the complicated region of the gene. And in the LR case of LRRK2, there's six clearly pathogenic mutations 
that lie in this you know, orange, blue and, and, and yellow domain, which is the kinase domain. And these disruptions are the cause of Parkinson's disease patients in all these families that we saw in, in previous slides. So this is really important because then it's, what we need to answer is that we need to understand what is the normal function of the LRRK2 gene, what does it normally do? Then we need to understand what happens when you have these punctuation mistakes. What changes with this function and how does this affect biology, neuronal behavior in cells? And then we can use these information to, 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 to better understand you know, the condition.